So in the Meshroom interface, uh, we first choose the kind of panorama we want to create. So here we will create a new panorama fisheye HDR pipeline. Uh, we drag and drop our images. We can use uh, either JPEG or RAW files or pre-converted images like DNG or EXR. So the first thing to do, as usual, uh, is to save our project as it defines where the data will be stored. Now we compute the first steps of the pipeline. So um, it has automatically detected the number of brackets, but we can also override it. Uh, in the image viewer, we can visualize the metadata. And if we look at the first node of the pipeline, the sampling, uh, so this sampling node will uh, select the most reliable pixel across the different brackets uh, to estimate the camera response function. Then the calibration node implements two standard methods to calibrate this camera response function uh, that we can then visualize uh, in the 2D viewer. And finally, uh, the LDR to HDR merge node fuses our LDR images together. In the image gallery, we can toggle the bracketing button to see the fused HDR images and then visualize them in the viewer. Uh, the viewer is 8-bit by default, but you can enable the HDR button to have a full floating point visualization. And you can then adjust gain and gamma to check highlights and dark areas. When we have our HDR images, uh, we can then start to extract feature points uh, that we can visualize in the viewer. Then the panorama init nodes uh, estimate the fisheye circle automatically. Uh, but you can also edit it manually. So, so it's green when it's uh, automatically estimated, and then it switched to yellow uh, for the manual edition. After that, uh, the panorama estimation node uh, computes the relative poses between the camera, and we can see uh, the links between the images as the 3D points uh, projected onto a 3D sphere. We can now compute the stitching part. Uh, so first, uh, we um, compute the panorama warping knot to warp images into the equirectangular coordinate system. Um, on this node, you can define the final resolution of the panorama. Uh, by default, it is estimated automatically. And you can adjust the upscale ratio to determine the trade-off you want between the amount of upscale and the amount of downscale pixels. But you can also manually set the output resolution of your panorama directly. Uh, then the panorama seams node tries to uh, reduce artifact on the transition between images by uh, selecting uh, optimal location for the seams. The panorama compositing node uh, will fuse all the warped images together uh, using the multiband blending algorithm. And the panorama merging node will just aggregate the result together into an image. So we can double click on this node and visualize our panorama. If we uh, enable the checkerboard background, we can see that we have some uh, missing part where the alpha is empty uh, on the border of the image. And these small uncovered area are filled up with the latest uh, node, with the final image processing node. Using, uh, just using the neighboring colors. And finally, we can right click on the latest node and select uh, open folder to retrieve our final image. Now we will look at the other use case. Uh, when we use standard optics with a motorized headset, so we create a panorama HDR pipeline, we drag and drop our folder with all our raw images, and we drop the XML file from the motorized headset. So it simply sets the file path uh, in the panorama init node on the XML config parameter. Now I just load a pre-computed scene to show you the result. So here we can see our panorama stitched. And I created an alternative branch in the graph with the debug option enabled. Um, so it shows the image borders in green and the optimized cut in red to visualize where the transitions are located. So when we have a data set like this one with more than 200 images, uh, it takes time to compute. 
but um, as for the 3D reconstruction workflow, uh, this process can be computed on render farm, and then the different steps are parallelized on several machines.